Okay. Thank you all for coming. Glad to see you here this morning. Um, I hope that you appreciate that we're here and not outside. When, when I pulled into the parking lot this morning, I mean, the sun was just coming up, but it was 29 degrees outside. Why are we don't do that? We're, we're faithful, but there's a limit. <laughs> All right, so we're starting in here. This is reflective and in remembrance of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem as he begins the holiest of weeks and, and he enters into his last supper with his friends. Then he is crucified and then ultimately resurrected. In many Christian traditions, we have Palm Sunday with the celebration of the entry into Jerusalem. And then we have Easter. And we don't talk about the stuff in the middle. Here we're talking about the stuff in the middle. And we're, we do it all today because we know that it's hard. And we don't want to skip from Sunday to Sunday without dealing with some of the hard stuff. So Palm Sunday, honestly, is a little bit of liturgical whiplash. <laughs> All right. Um, because we're starting with celebration and then we're going to get into the betrayal and the passion into the service. So as we begin, we're going to begin with the song. Caleb and our wonderful choir and um, new choir master, Abigail, are going to come meet us. <laughs> Um, you all can sing too. <laughs> yes. I'm going to make another joke, but I did not. Um, so everybody, everybody's going to sing. We're going to sing two verses of All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Honor. Then we will have the Liturgy of the Palms that Akarin and I will do here. And then we're going to sing more, three more verses, and we're going to walk. And the choir is going to lead us. Karin and I will follow up. I'll direct. You're not going to mess this up. And you're going to wave your palm as you walk down the down the right. aisle, so down the hallway into the church. This is a little bit familiar to everybody, right? All right, good. Well, let's begin. We'll start start with all glory, lot of comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord, God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at that fash in Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. In the immediately, as you entered it, you find tied there a cold. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, 
What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them that what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And threw their cloaks on it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. Others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead, those who followed, were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is our ancestor David. Hosanna in the high. He entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give God thanks and praise. Right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have saved us through your Son. On this day, he triumphed, proclaimed as King of by those who spread their garments and branches. Let these branches be for us signs of his. And grant that we who bear them in his name ever hail him as a king. Follow him in the way that we who lived in the land of the whole now and forever. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Of Christ. Amen.
Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the grace, sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. We will read responsibly by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consume with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. I have a... My bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I'm forgotten like a dead man, out of my mind. I am useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Your face shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard, regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
those who have been asked to read a part of the Passion, if you could come forward, I'd appreciate it. Everyone else may be seated. All right, so Richard, you have a mic on, right? This one as well. Now, we're just going to um, stand right in the front of the steps here, just right here, and turn and face the congregation so we can use this mic. This will be here. We're going to hold one over here as well. Put yourself in here, Jude. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody got a part? Now, congregation, you have a part two. We are the people. All right, so in here, in the bulletin, in the, in, everybody have one of these? Okay, with good. Here. There are some bolded parts with a little cross in front. That's our part that we all say together. And they are going to read the remainder. And we are not starting on page four. We're starting at the beginning. It's just easier. And we kind of missed some important parts. We skip. All right, so we're going to start from the beginning. Um, what we're doing today is a little bit different. Uh, um, there's not going to be a homily to follow. What is being read is the full passion of Jesus. There are no words that I can say that are going to make that more meaningful. So what I'd like us all to do is just meditate on what is being said. Pay close attention to the words on the page as you're hearing them being spoken. And you might find, this, this is a, a, a prayerful way of reading. It's called Lectio Divina. Um, it's a long practice of prayer where you read passage in scripture, and you'll find words that will just jump out at you, and you just focus on those words and think about those words. And this is quite long, so you might have even phrases or passages throughout the thing. And that's just really how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in the context of the passion Questions about that? All right. So your mic is on. Your mic is on. Now my mic is off. All right. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, They scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service. You always have the poor with you. You can show kindness whenever you wish. Not all. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body with the spirit. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed, she has done what will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, so he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the 
city, man carrying a jar, to meet you. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, Teacher, where is my guest room? I may eat and pass over with my guests. Show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, <laughs> He said to them, One of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. Woe to the one by whom the soul of the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to be. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it. Hmm. No worries. Sounds like they're having some technical difficulties at church. I assume they'll be back shortly. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, Anthony is one of the readers. So I guess we just have to sit tight. Yeah, I think AJ was uh manning the cameras. Okay. Hopefully. I'll send them a note, though. Yeah. Yes, thank you. with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. Now but the betrayer had given them a sign saying, One I will kiss is the man, arrest him, and lead him away under death. 
So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi. Judas kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Come out with you. Bless me. And it, day after day I was with you in the temple teaching. You did not arrest. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard, the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. In three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent. And did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah? I am. You'll see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do you heard his blasphemy? What is your All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, Also, but he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, That is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? 
See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? He realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowds to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him again into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him and to the king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. They led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you have destroyed the temple and the building in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, Save others and not save yourself. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabatani. This means, My God, my God, why have you when some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Then someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, This man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, and the, young, the younger end of Joses, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him, whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Joses, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of peoples, let us pray to the Lord. 
for our bishop and for all the clergy and people. Let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of this nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. In the communion of all of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, John Pfeiffer, Lee and Winnie Radford, Ashley and Sean Reagan, and Doug and Karen Reinheimer. We offer prayers for our military and their families, Eric, Robbie, Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, and Nate. We offer prayers for our college students, Colin, Karen, John, Kelsey, Zach, Virginia, AJ, Ben, Kristen, Seth, Caitlin, and Matthew. Please say with me the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against not God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on me, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to give a couple brief announcements. First, I want to thank everybody who participated in the dramatic reading. It's a powerful story. It needs to be told every year. And just appreciate your willingness to stand up and be on Zoom and all of the things in, in front of folks. So thank you for reading this morning. Um, we have services every day this week. Um, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they are on Facebook Live. Um, so if you like us on Facebook, you will see familiar faces leading evening prayer Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 7 p.m. For those of you who are desperate to see Frank's face, still out on medical leave, he will be leading me um, evening prayer on Monday and on Wednesday from home. So you can sign in, you can see him and his smile and all of, all of his goodness and put little comments to him and he would love to hear from you. So um, he will be there. Um, Monday and Wednesday. Thursday night, we are continuing our Trinity tradition of dinner at 6 o'clock. So it is a potluck soup, salad, and bread dinner. Um, if you can bring something, we'd appreciate it. We always have plenty of food, so don't worry about it if you can't. Um, we'd love for you to join us in the hall at 6. At 7 o'clock, we will move in here for um, to remember Jesus' Last Supper. Um, and the stripping of the altar. And what we're going to talk about on Thursday, if you're at all interested, is we're going to talk about the meaning of Passover um, because Jesus was celebrating the Passover. So if you don't know much about it or want to know why that's important, come on Thursday because uh, that's our discussion on Thursday night. Uh, Good Friday, we are going to have services at noon and 7 p.m. They are the exact same service. So it doesn't matter which one you come to. Um, if you don't want to drive at night, don't. You can come at noon. If you don't want to be here at noon and you prefer the evening, come at 7 p.m. and we will be here. Um, Easter Sunday, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., the exact same service. Our lovely choir will be here. Um, I have heard, just in case you're trying to figure out which service to come to, which you might be so inclined to come to 8 o'clock, there may be or may not be a catered breakfast after the 8 o'clock service, and I'm hearing things like beignets being said. So. I'm just saying, and we have an Easter egg hunt for kids after both services. So if there are children in your life, they will be occupied finding chocolate to give them a sugar high. And if you would like to have chocolate, you can hunt too. <laughs> Plenty of baskets. Questions about services? All right, lovely. Yeah, Anita. Uh-huh. Oh, that's true. We have we have brass instruments at, oh. at 10 o'clock. There, there's, kind of, there's lots of remake. Come and stay all day. <laughs> Karen and I will be here. <laughs> and apparently with Caleb and the choir, we're going to be here all day. You don't, you don't want to miss it. Or, you know, come for the beignets and stay for the brass. But it's kind of cheating, but yes, yes. Um, are there uh, birthdays in the coming week? Marilyn, is it your birthday? Excellent. Which day is your birthday? Oh, oh the opening day. <laughs> and I don't know why the Orioles do this to me every year. Opening day is like in the middle of Holy Week. That is not helpful. I know, the game's at three. I don't think I can be there and be here. So, you know, priorities, I'm coming here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so opening day. Marilyn, anybody else? All right, let's pray for Marilyn, shall we? Holy God, we thank you for Marilyn. We thank you for the light that she shines into every room she walks in. We thank you for her kindness, her love, her wonderful sense of humor, and the many blessings that we have all received from your hand through her. We pray your blessing upon her as she celebrates her birthday and pray for a year of health, happiness, and wholeness. In Jesus' name, amen. How about wedding anniversaries? No wedding anniversaries. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, Amen. There are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in this sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Anna Marie. Hello, Sunny. <laughs> Happy Holy Week. Happy Holy Week. Indeed. Happy Palm Sunday. Yeah. Are you are you working all week? Yeah, I think we well, I guess we get Friday off. Uh but otherwise I'm working. How about yeah, you? I, I get Friday off as well. But in my country, Holy Week is a holiday so it at least all the government oh, wow. schools are shut down so I'm a little bit jealous every year it's like <laughs> I moved to the states they get like oh, I wish I was home because right? everything, yeah yeah but but good 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 okay so let me know if you guys need any help during the week thank you I'm yeah. not on next Sunday like I I am not the virtual virgin next month next Sunday Okay. And I actually have to go go sign up for April and May. I haven't done that. Is the sign up genius up? I think I updated it. Okay, great. <laughs> if not, I'll let you know. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. I didn't do, uh, Mary actually just hit me up last night. She's like, hey, Anna Marie, uh, do we need people to do virtual version for Thursday and Friday? And I'm like, oh, stink. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, so Mary actually signed up for those. She said she could do both. Uh, okay. I figured if we all, like, I still plan to sign on. I, I don't, I think I have an event Thursday evening, but I plan to be there Friday. Um, so, yeah, please feel free to join. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'll join. So at least, you know, we have a co-host. Co-host yeah. is very handy. So, um, yeah, I'll try, I'll try to sign in and I'll sign up for the, um, for April and May. Um because I'm not on, I'm not, I'm not the virtual virgin next Sunday. I, I don't know who is the virtual virgin next week. Uh, I need to check. Okay, I'll check as well. But anyway, I am going to call in for church. Okay. If you, if you need any help, let me know. And I hope you have a, a peaceful Holy Week. Thank you, you too. Bye, Anna Marie. Bye, take care.